Um, and I know it sounds airy fairy, but it's true. I think those who've delivered returns better they, than their competitors have proven themselves to be bold. But if you are bold, you can do bold things. Now, here's the thing about this. Um, you have to know you're probably going to get it wrong. I think just change and that it's necessary mm -hmm. and and I think there's never been a better time in South Africa for us to have that conversation business leaders are talking about how do we change our businesses for the future but I also think business leaders have to talk about how do we change our businesses so that they're socially conscious so that they represent the markets we operate in so that they deliver hope for all South Africans not some South Africans mm -hmm. so uh, for me that was just the, the key message change and it's been done before so it's possible so let's not sit here and look for reasons why we can't do it. Let's just get it done. So the word disruption has been banded about a lot, but in effect, in truth, what disruption is, is anytime there are forces acting on your ecosystem that you can neither control nor neither control, dictate or understand, you call it disruption. So you're, you're sitting in a vehicle moving in a particular direction, but whether or not that vehicle gets there is determined by forces you don't control and often you don't understand them. So that what business leaders in South Africa today are frightened by is we come from an era of 60 years of controlling what factors affect our businesses. We controlled it. Mm. Now all of a sudden with the globalization of, 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 of markets, you've had markets being opened up and globalized and people buy anything from anyone, anywhere, anytime and those forces you can't dictate. So I'll give you a simple example. Many years ago, I met with a fellow called Peter Shields. He started a website called Hello Peter. The idea behind the website was that if you were unsatisfied with a certain customer, was it dissatisfied, yes. you would go and complain. He then makes the clerical error, which then became a big error, of forcing corporates to pay for accounts so that they can view complaints on the system. This happens at exactly the same time. Jack Dorsey and a group of other entrepreneurs in Silicon Valley create a platform called Twitter. Now, <laughs> Peter's challenge was he was being disrupted because a global player on a tech platform that doesn't even know he exists built an, an instrument that disrupted his. And it's happening everywhere. It's happening to the meter taxi industry in South Africa being dis disaggregated by Uber. It's happening to the large uh, gym industry in South Africa being disaggregated by the small, uh, small gym industry that's aggregating itself on apps. It's happening everywhere. It's happening with banks being disrupted by small financial services instruments. It's happening with, I don't know, currencies being disrupted by cryptos. It's happening everywhere. And what business leaders are trying to do is to do what we've known, control it. You can't control it. What you have to do is to learn to collaborate with it, work with it. And that's hard because we want to own stuff. Yeah. I want to own the database, I want to own the customer. But you can't now. Now you've got to go, well, let me let go and actually see what developer can build what for my business. That's why open source is going to be, be closed source in, in the modern day. I said to quickly, I said to the CEO of a bank the other day, I said to, to her, um, has it ever occurred to you that the best developer of your future products aren't going to be employed by you. The best developer of your future products is a six-year-old kid sitting in a garage somewhere who's working out a financial instrument that a customer needs, who's working out how do I take money that I've got invested in my stock fell and trade it on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange without removing it from my stock fell account. That kid, he's your best developer, not the guy you're paying 1.2 million rand to, who sits eight to five on a computer, costs you money, eats food in your, in your canteen and gets performance managed. <laughs> so it's, it's big, it's exciting too. Innovation is any time there are two factors that interconnect. And these two factors that interconnect come from different ecosystems. So think for a moment about what would happen if I said to you, I want to take a library and I put it on the internet, create an Amazon.
What would happen if I said I want to take a, um, a taxi business and put it on the internet? I create an Uber. What would happen if I said I wanted to take all the personal relationships you've developed over years and you put them on a Rolodex and you save them on your contact card and put it on the internet? I build a Facebook. Mm -hmm. The role it's playing in South Africa today is it's forcing business leaders to think outside their ecosystem. So for instance, in the conversation we just had, I was sharing with the audience that it's one thing for us to build a set of expertise around how do we enable retail clients to maximize revenue by merchandising, pricing, and a whole host of other competencies. But the retailers that are growing are online retailers. So what does our service look like online? Because it clearly isn't sending a merchandiser to a shop to change stuff, right? It's different now, but how do we use that insight? Because we can either try to compete with the online retailer, and what we know to be true is you fight the wave of change. It may take a while, but you will lose. Mm -hmm. Nobody wins a fight against the wave of change. Governments have collapsed fighting the waves of change. Big businesses have collapsed fighting the waves of change. Whether we talk about the apartheid government or Kodak or Smith Corona, you fight a wave of change, you will lose. The only thing you can do is try to understand it, become part of it, and try to ride it like the surfer does. Yeah. But to do that, and this is just a final note on this point about innovation, the business leader has to admit he doesn't know. He or she doesn't know. Just admit you're ignorant, you don't know, but you're willing to learn, and that's cool. There isn't. And it's different for different industries. So I wonder, for instance, about, let's, let's bring it home in South Africa, I wonder about the South African taxi industry. People think that it's, it's an informal industry. It actually isn't, it's incredibly formalized. And the people who work at are very industrious, they're great entrepreneurs. These guys worked out a cost per kilometer to run on a taxi that they didn't manufacture, it's made somewhere in China. They worked out the cost per kilometer to run the taxi maintain the taxi, put new tires on it, the they, they worked it out. Then they worked out how to price it optimally in a route so that the customer can afford to move from home to where they were going. And then they worked out how to disseminate route amongst each other so each of them underneath it can have sustainable businesses. I'm sorry, these guys are geniuses. Hmm. What's missing? The world they know and understand hasn't connected itself with the world they don't know and don't understand, which is this world of mobile, of internet, of new age, of information technology. Connect these two things, you could have an incredibly powerful business. Because picture the scene actually, where I could know which taxi rank to go to at what time, so that I don't wait too long in the taxi to get to my destination on time. Because today, umundo suge lokshi and it goes to town, it's a bet, mm. it's, a, um, it's a gamble. It's a gamble, you know, I'm gonna get there and wait for four, and if it takes an hour to fill up, it takes an hour. Mm. What, wait, let's think of it differently. How about if the taxi drivers knew how many taxis to put on what route, so that they could maximize utility of the taxi and minimize waiting time. Huh. How would that work? Because when taxis are sitting parking in a rank somewhere, there are some parts of the country where people are waiting for a taxi, but it's not there. It's a bit like the library in town that's sitting full of books and the library in a township with not enough books. <laughs> so it's just about the distribution of the asset and making sure that it's available where you need it. But again, we've got to start with I don't know. Like, I actually don't know what I don't know, but I'm willing to learn. Be bold. Um, and I know it sounds airy-fairy, but it's true. I think those who've delivered returns better they, than their competitors have proven themselves to be bold, right? It's, I mean, it's, it was fascinating for me that we came from a decade now in South Africa where business leaders were uncertain about the future and as a, as a result sat on capital and didn't invest it, right? But if you are bold, you can do bold things. Now here's the thing about this, um, do me, it's, you have to know you're probably gonna get it wrong. That is what the leader is not comfortable in. Mm. So what separates the best from the rest is the leader who goes, I'm gonna do something, it's gonna be bold and audacious, it might be wrong, but I'm happy to fall on my sword. The rest go, you know, I've taken over this business, it's been around for the past 50 years. It's growing at 3% compounded annual growth rate every single year. We pay out our dividends to our shareholders, we're EBITDA positive. I'm just gonna 
I'm going to custodian and gatekeep for the next five years, make sure that I earn my payout, and then I'm gone. Why? Because I grew up in this business. I've been here 30 years myself. I worked my way up the ladder. I don't want to be the guy who messes it up. And so there is a, the attitude is more of, please God, I mustn't mess it up, rather than how cool could this be if we did it this way? It's about being bold. It would have to be a prerequisite, I suppose. It would have, yeah, it's an input because you, you can't do the transformative process without going through a change process. And you can't do innovation unless you're in transformation. Jeez, that's a lot of issues. Um, let's just break it down. So in, 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 our, in our work in our firm, and I speak about it at length in my book, change is linear. Starts at a point, ends at a point. The beginning state dictates the end state. This is how the frog becomes from the tadpole starts a tadpole with a tail, consumes, lives and eats, tail disappears, legs emerges, it becomes the frog. Change. Transformation is a complete change and a complete remodeling of the entity that is. This is how the caterpillar comes from, or the butterfly comes from the caterpillar. If you looked at them standing independently, they look nothing alike. Mm. But the caterpillar decided doesn't like its life as this wormy thing, hives itself and incubates. When it comes out, it emerges the beautiful butterfly. Yeah, that's very different. So when you talk innovation, you're probably talking transformation, mm. which is again, a business leader, admit you don't know. You're a caterpillar. You don't know if you're gonna come out a green or orange butterfly. But if you don't go into the incubation and find out, you'll never know. You could stay the caterpillar, because you know that, right? And that's the, that's the shift many business leaders are having to make. Yeah.